Today I'm talking about the fact that you can't give what you don't have, so stay tuned for the teaching. Today I'm on the subject of the fact that, you know what, we just simply can't give something we don't have. But you see, I see Christians making this state mistake sometimes in a very practical way. They have a heart maybe to help someone else. Maybe there's someone talking to them and they're opening up their heart for some type of encouragement and help. And sometimes, you know, as an example, in the area of healing, I've heard people that they give what I call a pat answer to someone. In other words, um, they just tell them what they should be doing like it's a formula, like they're giving them some scripture like, well, you should be do this, or you should be believing this, and they tell them what to do, but they don't show them how to do it. In other words, that is a person that's trying to give something they don't really have. They haven't been there themselves to the point that they've experienced the Holy Spirit of their teaching. In other words, if you haven't gone through challenges in life to the point that you've turned to Jesus, you've experienced the Word of God opening up in your heart by the Holy Spirit, you've gotten answer through God's Word that gives you understanding to the, po- to the place that you've become that truth, to the place you've gotten results from God, that you've got confidence in God in that area of life. I tell you, a person that has experienced the goodness of God in the land of the living, they have fresh manna to give someone. They've got something that's not just a pat answer, not something like, well, you should be doing this, trying to tell a person what to do. No, they communicate entirely different because there is a well, a love and a compassion within their heart for the individual because they've been there. And when they were under the weight of the circumstances and problems of life, they experienced the faithfulness of God. They've got confidence in God and they communicate totally, completely different. I'm telling you, we all operate in the knowledge we have at the time and it's very important that that knowledge is not intellectual information, but it's knowledge that's come by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit being our teacher. When it's opened up the Word of God to us so that it's not just intellectual information. It's not just something we choose to believe. No, it's truth we've become as a way of life in Christ because we've experienced the Holy Spirit as a teacher. We've got comfort to give someone. You see, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Verse 4 says this, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. I'm telling you that the comfort that comes in the midst of tribulations, when you turn to Jesus and experience the faithfulness of God, instead of allowing your problems to dominate you and face them on your own in the arm of the flesh and leaving God out of the picture, but just wanting God to do something for you, but instead you choose to relate to the problem with unbelief and choose to allow the problem to consume your heart, I tell you, that won't bring you to a place of victory. But on the other hand, that when you experience the comfort of God in the midst of the tribulation, the problems, the circumstances, of life, then you've got something that where you're able to comfort others in any kind of trouble because you've been there and you know the faiths of God, but you've come to understand the ways of life in Christ because you see the Word of God is opened up to you with understanding to the point that when you communicate truth, you're coming from a place of been there. No, you know, and you can understand where the person is coming from, and there can be more of a compassionate heart instead of just telling somebody what they should be doing. No, you're able to give them insight. You're able to encourage them in such a way. It's like you've been under tribulation. You've been there, but you've experienced the comfort that comes from the Lord. You've experienced wisdom. You've experienced answers to the point that you've experienced the faithfulness of God. You know how to communicate to a person effectively that's been under those problems because you've been there and you've experienced God, and you know the wisdom and the insight that you can give them that will benefit them to open up their heart to Jesus, to be able to experience the same faithfulness of God that you experienced so that you didn't limit Jesus and you want them not to limit Jesus as well. But you see, it, verse 3 says this, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we were appointed for this. Sermons, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 here. In fact, I'm going to go back to verse 2. It says, and that Paul sent Timothy, our brother, to minister of God and our fellow laborers in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. In other words, he sent Timothy. He didn't send a novice. He sent 
Timothy, who was capable, a very effective minister, because he had been there himself. He was capable of communicating truth in God's word, number one, to establish them. Establish them in a way that what? Would encourage them, in other words, strengthen them in the faith. Because it says concerning your faith. It, the faith is a build for your heart to trust God, have confidence in him. Because you see, you've been there, you've done that, and you've got you've experienced the faithfulness of God. You've got something that will encourage. You've got something that'll keep a person from being moved when their emotions instead be able to steadfast within their hearts and stand steadfast with their heart opened up to Jesus, where my sheep know my voice, where you can be led by the Spirit of God because you know his voice. The problems aren't dominating your heart to the point that it's hardening your heart towards Jesus. No, you're very open to him. Praise God. So I encourage you today to comfort those out of the comfort that you've received from the Lord. Open up your heart in the midst of your problems so because you see what you learn can be a benefit to others.